like to call our March, um, excuse me, I'd like to call our March regular school board meeting to order. First order of business, I'd like to entertain a motion to allow Mr. Tony Jones to join us via phone. I so move. Second. Ms. Dillard? Yes. Ms. Gibbons? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Woods? Yes. Motion is carried. I'd like to welcome all of our visitors and our, our many visitors tonight and our viewing audience also. Next, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mrs. Gibbons and invocation by Dr. Talley. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would like to entertain a motion to convene the close. Prayer. Excuse me, I always forget that. I shouldn't. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another year, for another month. Thank you, God, for the turn of the seasons, as you declared in your word that seasons would change. We thank you even for those who have suffered emotional stress, especially with the loss of so many uh, loved ones in our school district and not only us, all over the world. Pray that you might bring them comfort uh, and encourage the heart in the fact that you never do anything wrong and that you are always in control when things are out of control. Now, God, we just pray that you would bless this meeting. We thank you for all of our supporters and wonderful guests tonight. And we just pray a blessing, a special blessing upon each family uh, that, that's assembled here tonight. Now, God, bless this meeting, that everything done uh, might be done to your glory, for the best of our young people and the wonderful community that we live in. Strengthen us now, and we ask all these things in that great name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now, I'd like to entertain a motion to convene the closed session. Pursuant. 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 Pursuant to Section 2.2371A 2 of the Code of Virginia, I move that the Board convene in closed session for the purpose of discussing the following specific matters. Discussion and consideration of the evaluation, employment, assignment, and reassignment of employees of the Martinsville City Schools, as authorized by Section 2.2-3711A1 of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Ms. Dillard? Yes. Ms. Gibbons? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Woods? Yes. I'd like to entertain a motion to return to regular session. I so move. I Ms. Dillard? Yes. Ms. Gibbons? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Woods? Yes. Whereas the Martinsville City School Board has convened in a closed meeting of the state pursuant to an affirmative vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act and whereas Section 2.2-3711 of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by the school board that such session was conducted in conformity with Virginia law, now therefore it be resolved that Martinsville City School Board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in closed session to which this certification applies and only such public business matters were identified in the motion convening the closed session were heard, discussed, and considered. Ms. Dillard? Yes. Ms. Gibbons? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Woods? Yes. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the personnel report as presented. I so move. I second. Ms. Dillard? Yes. Ms. Gibbons? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Woods? Yes. Do we have any registered speakers? No, ma'am. Can we just bring Delta up now? Is that okay? They're 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 oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. Community focus? Next. So I've got a little ahead of myself. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I hope everyone's taken a moment to download the Martinsville City Schools app onto your smartphones or tablets. 
Dr. Talley, I can help you with yours later. Uh, <laughs> you didn't have to do that. Right. I, I really did, though. I know Angela put you up to that, right? It's, yeah. not, it's not on here, Callie. It's not on here. <laughs> I can help so anyone who needs help. No worries. <laughs> uh, uh, so, as you all know very well, uh, we are very fortunate to have a number of fraternities and sororities who are very active within our community, and so. I thought Community Focus would be a great opportunity to uh, take some time to highlight uh, some of them. And tonight we have the Martinsville Alumni Chapter of uh, Delta Sigma Theta, and um, uh, President Brunel Thomas uh, will come up and share some of the work that uh, that sorority has been doing, uh, both within our schools and within our community. Okay. Ladies. To Ms. Dillard, Chair of the School Board, to the members of the City School Board and Dr. Talley and everybody who makes up this great assembly. Good evening. Good it evening. is um, our pleasure to be here with you tonight and I ask, is this the appropriate time to invite the members of the chapter sure. or would you like for us to come up later? Yeah, you, can, come you can invite them up, that's fine. So, wow, wow, a sea of red. Right. So shall the sea of red come? <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like for Just us to stay? Just around you so that Okay, around me. You. Okay. okay. Sure. Absolutely. Wonderful. I know Shayla Williams. <laughs> <laughs> you know Dr. Simon. I know Dr. <laughs> Simon too. Oh, we miss her. So we can... Sure. Ladies, is it okay if we stand in front of her? Oh, okay, so we can go all the way to the wall if sure. necessary. <laughs> Miss okay? <laughs> <laughs> Red is responsible for pulling my coattail if I stay up here too long. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Brunel Thomas and I'm a member of the Martinsville Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I have the distinct honor to serve as president of our chapter of 50 members strong who are active and retired professionals in the fields of education, accounting, banking, business, criminal justice, education, entrepreneurship, health care, human services, mental health, insurance, marketing, military service, and I'm certain I have overlooked something that many of these women do, whether it's their full-time job or their part-time or retired position. Martinsville Alumni Chapter has been serving Martinsville and Henry County almost 73 years, having been chartered on November 27, 1951. We are truly grateful for our long-standing partnership with Martinsville City Public Schools. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is an organization of college-educated women committed to the constructive development of its members and to public service with a primary focus on the black community. As a national organization, back in 1937, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated decided to fulfill one of its main goals by raising funds to sponsor bookmobile services in the South, providing access to information for African Americans when public library services were often unavailable to them. To achieve this goal, the National Library Project, which was called a traveling library, was established by the sorority. We continue this legacy in the Martinsville Alumni Chapter each year as we look forward to March, not just to celebrate Sisterhood Month, but to make our annual trip to Clearview Early Learning Center to donate books to the preschool students. Martinsville Alumni Chapter has served an estimated 120 preschool students each year at Clearview for at least the last 13 years. We also partner with Henry County Public Schools with the same project. It is so rewarding to see those little people shop for their free books, some a little more decisive than others. <laughs> and we love to receive those handmade creative thank you notes from the students and the staff who take care of teaching them on a daily basis. Mrs. Williams, whom you may notice also is wearing a red blazer, <laughs> and her team at Clearview roll out the red carpet for us every year. Now, Dr. Talley, I'm meaning figuratively because I don't think you get that type of treatment when you come. <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss that. 
<laughs> she may need some budget for <laughs> But we always receive such warm hospitality from the team at Clearview every year that we attend. Sharing our love for books and reading is only one of the many service projects that we do in the community. Other ways that Martinsville Alumni Chapter continues to serve align with our national five-point programmatic thrust. They're nervous because I'm changing the page. <laughs> Remember, ladies, we are on camera. <laughs> the first being economic development which we have used this thrust to offer informational financial wellness workshops in the community in partnership with Carter Bank and Trust. We will soon offer our first Kids in Biz event on April 15th at the uh, Monogram Smith River Sports Complex, offering exposure to local youth entrepreneurs. No shameless plug here. Educational development is another programmatic thrust. Not only do we do the book drive with the school, but we also host an annual scholarship night, and we recently relaunched the Dr. Betty L. Shabazz Delta Academy. We currently have 12 middle school young ladies participating in our mentoring program, where we provide them with the necessary tools to embrace their strength and worthiness. Did we mention that we also partner with the high school and host the HBCU College Fair, because if she were here, Mar Marcy Harrison would be wearing a red blazer as well. <laughs> you see, we're busy in Martinsville and Henry County. International Awareness and Involvement, our third programmatic thrust, was busy during the pandemic, offering awareness to COVID, trying to destigmatize the myths about vaccines. We do annual AIDS day, and we have done that in partnership with the West Piedmont Health District. We also have provided care packages to our female military active duty um, uh, SARS or women in active duty service. Last, oh, not lastly, physical and mental health is our fourth programmatic thrust where we bring awareness to important topics like destigmatizing the perception of mental health, colon cancer, and Women's Heart Health Month. So join us again on April 15th when we'll do two events at the Sports Complex. We'll, we will be partnering with the Coalition for Health and Wellness to do health screenings and vaccinations. That's April 15th. Lastly, social action. We have been a sorority nationally has, that has stayed engaged with voter registration and awareness. Did I mention that our chapter also offers a $1,000 scholarship to one senior at each of the high schools, Bassett, Magna Vista, and Martinsville? It is the desire of our chapter to maintain this partnership with Martinsville City Public Schools as we continue moving forward with fortitude, engaging our sisterhood, empowering our communities, and elevating our impact. If you discover other ways that we can strengthen this partnership and collaboration, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you again for this opportunity to be a part of your community focus and highlighting the work of Martinsville Alumni Chapter, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Thank you. May we get a group picture with the sure, school board members? Can I say something Yes, ma'am. First of all, when I looked out there and saw that sea of red, and I know so many of you, and I'm just so proud to be for you to be in our presence and for us to be in your presence and you do so much in our schools I was over at the HBCU fair and I looked over there and saw Sia Red mm -hmm. um, I know Tequila I know Miss Jeffries I know Miss Williams and I probably know y'all I, don't know. <laughs> I, I just know so many of you and you do so much in our community and for our kids we appreciate it so much can you tell me a little bit more about that Betty L. Chavez I'll let Miss Williams or Dr. Simonton. Dr. Simonton, in her retirement, we miss Ms. Simonton. She volunteered her. to lead this project for the chapter we as if her. she didn't have enough to do. <laughs> With those grandbabies. Yeah. First of all, let me say that it is an honor to be back in the chamber so and the room with, with my friends, my colleagues, for 40 years. And so it, it's special to me to be here. Dr. Betty Shabazz um, Delta Academy is a mentoring program for middle school girls ages 11 to 14 years old. Our focus is on trying to help them to find strength within themselves to become the women that they can be as years go on. We started um, on February 27th with uh, Piedmont Community Services coming in to do 
um, some work with our parents and our very own Felicia Preston came in to do some work with our students on self-reflecting, it's okay not to be okay. So the focus is on, this, again, the programmatic thrust, physical and mental wellness, uh, international awareness, social action. So we'll be meeting with these young ladies once a month, the fourth Monday of each month and we'll be doing nationally developed modules with them that relate to our programs and trying to develop them into women who will be productive in our community as they grow up. It prepares them for school, but also for life beyond school. Is and that's it, basically it. Is there a limit on how many right girls? Right now, um, we started uh, our first group of girls. Um, you had to go through um, some risk management training. Parents had to give consent and all of that had to be done before our first meeting. So we'll probably start off with another group of young ladies in addition to anyone who would like to come back in the fall. So um, we contacted our school counselors to identify our students. Uh, we went in, Dr. Uh, Sheila and I and sat down and talked with them about what it was we were trying to do and they identified the girls they thought would benefit from the program. So we have all we are going to take uh, because it's only through May through the rest of this school year, but we will start with the fresh group of girls and some who are willing to return in the fall. So just give me a call if you've got somebody you want to participate. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Ms. Thank you. I just certainly want to say thank you so much for uh, to the sorority for what, <clears throat> what you do. Uh, our community is so much better. I haven't been here 45 years and, and watched some of the things that you knew, not just this year, but through the past. It's been tremendous. So the role model, um, just being that. Uh, the standard that, that other young people can look up to is just so important. And uh, uh, all of you could run for political office. <laughs> <laughs> You're so versatile oh. and uh, well spoken. And uh, I'm just uh, thank you for again being a part of Marginal City Schools. And I hope you'll always be a part. We have many of you retired teachers from us. and. And if you want to come back to work, <laughs> so I can recruit a little bit. Uh, we, Look at me, son. I, I'm son. looking at the, the faces. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm just looking at some of the faces. But uh, if you should have a change of heart, <laughs> I want to come back. Uh, so you're just welcome. But we love you. And, Thank you for what you did. Mm -hmm. We Thank do you appreciate you so much. Impact. Thank you so much. Can we, we get a picture? Pictures, Can Callie? we get a picture? Uh, In the series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We will probably come through here. Okay. That's what we usually do. Donna, you know so ladies, we need to go on that side.
great group, man. Thank you, Callie, for bringing, bringing yeah. the Delta. Thank you so much. So next on to awards and recognition. Um, the Eastman Oratorical Contest winner presented by Lynn Deckel. Mm -hmm. Please Lynn come here. forward. Introduce yourselves. Um, my name is Afo Grant, and this is my English teacher, Ms. Deckel. Hi. Okay. Hi. <laughs> yeah. So I read a little bit about it online. Um, last year, a couple of years ago, we got to view it, mm -hmm. but I wasn't able to this year. Oh, and there's Dr. Dixon. Hey. Um, Hi. So Ava, you won second place, second place prize, and you did it on pediatric neurosurgeon. Alexa Irene Kennedy. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> um, so she was the first African-American woman to become a neurosurgeon in the United States. Um, what was interesting about her is I just, I thought that, you know, she didn't have her struggles to find her. She um, took what she had inside her. She had willpower, which is one of the things I highlighted in my speech and in my essay. And I decided to go with that and how that kept her moving forward and that she didn't let any of her professors or even though she wasn't um, the majority in the group, she still took to it and she still decided that, it, that she was going to go through it. And I thought that was really empowering because, I mean, becoming like a neurosurgeon, that's a pretty big deal and becoming the first is always very scary, but I think she did that and um, that was just really cool to read on so yeah what do you what do you think that the lessons and it sounds like you're very much involved in your writing which is great you've taken a deep dive into your writing but what do you think her lessons are for young people today um I mean I think that when you when I guess somebody tries to put an obstacle in your way, I think it's really hard um, for you to keep going because you're always reminded that that could happen again or that could stop you from achieving your goal. And so I think that discourages a lot of people, um, especially if you're put through a hardship like that. So I think her goal and her message was just think about the impact that it will have for others and think about um, the long lasting effect it can have on people who are facing the same struggles that you are. So, I see why you're a winner. Yeah, 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 really. What grade are you in? I'm, I'm, I'm a sophomore. I'm in the 10th grade. Oh, wow. Keep writing. A lot of insight. Yes. So what are your plans for the future? What are you planning to do after senior year? Um, I would like to go into the, I guess, like health career genre. Um, I'm thinking about going to a small university, but hopefully going through governor school just to see where that can take me. So, yeah. You'll go far. And how much did you win? A uh, thousand dollars. All right. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Ms. Decker, do you have anything you want to say about your student? Because I know you, um, she just seems to be totally motivated. Yeah. Um, she was an absolute pleasure to work with, like for the speech. Um, when I got told that she had made it into the top five, um, I wasn't surprised at all. I mean, with how hard she works and how great her writing is, um, we, when turning it into the speech, I mean, she worked so hard on it. I mean, I gave her a few tips and pointers, but that was about it. I mean, it really was all her. Um, and then when she got up there on contest night and uh, it all came together and she, uh, she really performed well. So I'm really proud of her and I'm, uh, I'm a very lucky English teacher to have her, so. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dixon, did you have anything to add? Well, no, not really. I'm just, <laughs> well, uh, I'm just elated uh, by um, her accomplishment. She is a bright kid, uh, well-spoken, and uh, I'm just proud of the work that uh, English teachers are doing at Martinsville High School, uh, helping um, young people articulate these ideas and get them on paper, and so um, I'm just proud. But yeah, I just wanted to be here for more support. 
Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I want to say, Ms. Deck, as I do my walkthroughs in your English class, uh, I'm very grateful that the, the type of questions that you ask in class really lends itself to creativity. As we, Dr. Dixon and I, walk through your room, you're asking your students to reach and think about responses, and I think this young lady is the perfect example of it. So again, kudos to you all, so. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. Can we get a picture? Yes, let's get a picture. Can we get a picture? Yeah. Next, we have our state indoor track winners presented by Coach Linwood Dodson. My name is Ronnie Jackson, and I'm in 12th grade. And Dr. Talley, on the behalf of the track and field, we would like to give you this jersey. And hopefully, in two months, the whole track team be up here going to state. So, wow, oh, that is that's so nice. crazy. With all the guys. Yeah, guys, come on, let's take this picture. Thank you, guys. Uh, Mr. Williamson wants to come down too because he was on my track team. <laughs> he was on my track team. He knows the pain and the suffering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so proud of you guys. Guys, please right. say something and, and introduce everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> Again, thank the school board for having us uh, on behalf of Monville High School Bulldogs. I'd like to present the first leg of the relay team. It's Jordan Smith. <laughs> second, <laughs> second leg is not here. That's uh, Ronnie Dixon. Ron. I hope I said it right. <laughs> oh, anyway, this is Boots. We call him third leg, Boots. Ronnie Jackson. And of course, everybody know Jamal Jones. I can go on and on and tell everybody about this and that, but these guys, they jail. They are a good team. We had the state record in the relay team, and we end up losing it by a tenth of a second to the next team coming up. But we was able to set two state records, thanks to Jamal. And uh, he won the 55, turned around, he rested up, put his sweats on, got ready for his next race. Then he came around and broke another record hmm. in the 300. Remarkable young man. This man, his, the goal is unreal for him. We get ready to go outdoor. And this year, like uh, Brother Jackson said, we come back, hopefully the whole team will be up here. Our goal is the ultimate state title. I don't believe I ever did in Marble High School. No. Second, we've only finished second, right? Yeah, we yeah. finished second, second one year. Well, five we, guys. Yeah. yeah, we got a goal in mind. Hopefully, you we can do, do it. it. So, Mr. Jones, and is it true that you never ran indoor track? 
this is my first year. First, first year, year and you won't stay. And, and the young lady, did you get introduce ready, her? Get ready to come to her okay. now. <laughs> All right. Now, this is the uh, cream of the crop. I can say that. She's a sophomore. Wow. Wow. Yeah, she's a sophomore. Freshman year, she made some noise. Nobody never saw it coming. And all of a, all of a sudden, here's Rakaya. Rakaya Mitchell Harrison. Y'all remember that name? Just like y'all remember Jamal. Jamal, I'm going to bring him back for another year, the whole group. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is uh, Rakaya. And uh, she run the 55. She, preliminaries, she won her preliminary. But the when the uh, final race, she's getting close. Next year, I believe she's going to have it. She if not indoor, outdoor this year, I believe she got it. She will. She will be back. She'll be back. I'm getting ready. It's good to see you all again. Hopefully, I can keep coming. <laughs> with, with runners like this, no problem. Well, you have every year, and I was in Region 6 Superintendent's meeting, and they were talking about our indoor track team, um, how explosive it was, and, and looking forward to the outdoor season. Yes. But, um, you know, and, and all you guys can run your way right to scholarships with the superintendents and, and collegiate people are talking about you. Um, and they know your names uh, from the, the big meets that you've run. You've run a lot of big meets. So I'm just so proud of you. You'll see a lot of me outdoors this, this year. And I'll say one more thing. They are well respected throughout the region, throughout the state. They're well respected. Everybody knows Marlboro High School's track team. And it's because of me, it's because of these guys right here. They win, they sit, and they don't, you don't have to worry about them. You ain't got to run them all over the school looking for them, you know where they'll be at. Proud of them, each and every one of them. Parents, you've done a good job. Thank you. I'd like to get a picture with them. It's okay. I'd like to get a picture with them. Um, and you're a senior? Yes, And what were you? A junior. Just a junior. A junior. So you'll be back. You'll be back. And you're a senior. Yeah. Still thinking about where you want to go to school. I'm not 103 yet, but well, a lot of people. Have you had a lot of offers? But yeah, uh, not really. I got two right now, but we got some more coming. Is yeah. that from football or track? Football, as of right now. You break the state record, so you can get that track. I promise you that too. You look really tall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look tall. All right, one, two, three, and Yeah. So proud, so proud, so proud, so proud. So proud. What schools? Yeah. 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 Uh, I just want to say also, these guys are so well behaved and have good academic standing too. Thank you. That's Thank you for coming. Great. It really makes it sweet. Okay, guys. Next, we have All State Diving presented by Miss Katarina Childress. My name is Natalie LaPrad and I'm a junior at Marlinsville High School. Um, let's see, okay. I, um, this is actually my first year doing swim and dive. Oh, all right. I've um, participated in sports throughout every year of high school, except for COVID year, of course, my freshman year. But um, this is my first year doing swim and dive and I originally started it just to stay in shape during my off season. And I had amazing coaches, so, you know, they kept me going, they kept me pushing, they pushed me to my fullest potential, and they got me to where I was. And one day, Coach Murphy and Coach Golden <laughs> were talking, and they both knew that I took karate and that I could flip. <laughs> so they were like, you should just, you know, you should just get up on the diving board, just try it one time, see if you like it, and if you don't, you don't. I got up there, I landed one flip, and from that point on, they just encouraged me with everything they had. They really pushed me to the best I could be, 
you know. Um, I had only been doing dive for about a month and a half when the season ended, and I placed at States, so that is a big accomplishment, and I couldn't have done it without my amazingly supportive team or supportive coaches. Thank you, and congratulations. So do you dive off next year? Yes, I, can, I plan on placing higher next year. So. All right. So is it off the high dive? We do the one meter. We do the one meter dives, the we, little ones. We don't have a pool deep enough, and this is the other really? thing about swimming. And, and now these guys have to go to the hard grade. Yes, we that, practice. And I hate that. Uh, I've mm -hmm. been over to the Y to see some of the matches, mm -hmm. but you can't really dive mm -hmm. uh, like you can mm -hmm. there. But uh, Natalie's administrators will tell you, and I, I have to say this about her personally, as great of an athlete that she is, she's an even greater person. And her principals love her, have always loved her. Um, she's been like a family member, and I'm just so proud. I didn't know she swam. <laughs> I, I had no clue she until I was good. talking to her coaches one day, and uh, they told me she was out. So I was campaigning, trying to get her to do another sport this spring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've yes. already been talking to her, but we're just so proud of you. And Thank Christiansburg, you. I think your other matches had to be in Christiansburg, right? Um, yes. They have yes. they have that pool where you can. Oh, okay. well, the tech of it. Yeah, yes, cause, where Because your son devices. dove, and then we had one more. I think she's the only second student we've had to, to be an All-Stater. Uh, the young man that plays soccer for us and went to PA. Wilson Bowles. Wilson Bowles. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. just so proud. You're in great company. Yes, so thank proud you. of you. Thank you. What other sports are you participating in? Um, well, my parents, they own a karate studio, so I've been taking karate for almost my whole life. <laughs> um, at school, I play volleyball. I've been playing volleyball since the sixth grade, so five years now. And I also do softball on and off. So Good for you. Yeah, I was trying to well, get congratulations. Her to yeah, participate you. this spring. So I'm such a great athlete. Try to stay active. <laughs> Can we take a picture with you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Talk to them about some karate lessons. So next song. Yeah. Next song. <laughs> next on to information agenda, Mrs. Sheila Williams, preschool registration. <laughs> Why not? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I stand before you this evening to tell you proudly that we will have our upcoming school year applications for the 2023-2024 school year for Clearview Early Learning Center available beginning on March 27th. Uh, we usually give them out to the current students, which would be our current three-year-old students, and try to give them a, a little head start in front of the community. But anyone that stops by or uh, checks out the MCPS website, they can download one. They can stop by the school and pick up a copy of the application. And inside of the application, there is a list that lists all the documents that's required uh, when you're submitting your application back to ensure that your application is complete. Those documents consist of, uh, first, uh, proof of residency to the city of Martinsville, uh, your child's original birth certificate, updated physical and immunization records, along with uh, two uh, copies or two proof of income. 
uh, statements. And so once we have all of those documents in, the applications are put into a pool and usually around the end of May, we start going through those applications and sending out um, enrollment update, enrollment information to our families. So we know, and well, we're hoping, <laughs> pending budget approval, we're hoping to have 36 three-year-old slots again next year and hopefully 64 four-year-old slots. So that is uh, four VPI four classes and three um, VPI three classes. So, and we continue to accept applications even once school starts because we like to have a wait list. Um, and that way in case someone uh, moves or withdraws from the program or whatever, we have another pool of applicants that we can pull from. But we also do share that information with parents' permission with another preschool program, um, the Head Start program. So, because some preschool, we want all of our kids to be able to come in and have some preschool before going into kindergarten. So, you so, always have. I'm sorry. Wait. So, when are we uh, able to look for these applications? March 27th. March 27th. You can start looking March 27th, okay. yes. You said online? Uh, online, as well as pick up from uh, Clearview Early Learning Center, or you can call us at 276 403. 5800 and we'll put a packet in the mail to you. So everyone who's presently in there now, they have to reapply again? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for asking that. Um, all of our current three-year-old students will have to reapply for the upcoming school year. So a new application will be required, new proof of income, new proof of residency, but we already have a copy of birth certificate and then any updates to their immunization and an updated physical record. And you must be three by September 30th in order to qualify for our program. Thank you, Sheila. Your program is such an excellent program. And people start calling already for next mm -hmm. year. They uh, have. <laughs> we, we, yes. We're just looking forward to another just great group. Uh, whether young people are reading early, mm -hmm. counting early, mm -hmm. and I hear Mr. Williamson. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Emmett came by today to, to claim his prize. <laughs> <laughs> like, he had to count that. to me while I left yes. Clearview and show me he could count. He can. He was doing yeah. addition. He was very, yes. very was doing good addition. with that, that yeah. sheet. Yeah. And uh, I'm very proud of him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she okay. All right. I didn't get an opportunity to come to read this Don't year. Oh, you can I come. Did. I did. I, I yes. planned to come to no, we're school out there. there's in Patrick we're Henry. No, no, never. It's never yeah. too late. It's never too late. Well, it's never too late. Up, you call. You call. You call. Yeah. You call. Yeah. You're welcome, yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Sheila, yeah. I have some props. Okay. I'll bring you bring them. We didn't have that problem this year. <laughs> but, but I did see on Facebook that you all did a, a gala. Did well, you? it was like a little Valentine's Day gala. We so wanted cute. our little ones cute. to dress up and to have something special just for them. We didn't open it up um, to the parents, all that, but we took lots of pictures for them. We had lots of balloons. We had little refreshments and stuff. Just wanted them to feel special for the day. That was special. Yeah. I saw it. That that was was special. Yes, I think they enjoyed it. The oh, they got to pop all the balloons. <laughs> oh, <that was> wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was wild. They had a good time doing it, though. <laughs> So I know I always talk about this program, but this mm -hmm. program really is just fabulous. It's just you. you do an amazing job well, with, with our little people and give them a great start, you know, for school. So we thank hope you. that's continue. We hope it, it can grow. Mm -hmm. So I'll thank say. you. So we much. have a great team. You do. Thank it's a you. great I'll team. It's you. not a. I, it's a team effort. So yeah. we love very it. proud we love to be a part of. It. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on to consent agenda, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes as presented with our, at, at our February 13th meeting and the financial report ending February 28th. I second. I second. Ms. Dillard? Yes. Ms. Givens? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Woods? Yes. The motion is carried. Um, Next, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the policies, the first and final reading. Um, these were some minor edits. I did have an opportunity to go through 
all of these. And I wanted to mention, too, that these policies are recommended for consideration. Um, they're provided by VSBA, and they're drafted by their in-house counsel. And the policies are designed to meet the legal requirements for the VA code, the Virginia code, and federal code um, where applicable. So um, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve these policies as presented. So moved. Second. Ms. Dillard? Yes. Ms. Givens? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Woods? Yes. Motion is carried. Next on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Ms. Dillard. <laughs> I say that we had again quite a busy month for attending the AASA conference out in San Antonio and uh, got an opportunity to talk to some uh, national speakers. Uh, it seems like no matter whether it's, it's Canada or whether it's a, um, Washington State or New York, um, all of us are dealing with the same issues of trying to adjust after the pandemic. Uh, what to do when ESSA funds disappear, uh, because that's going to leave a, a, a gourd. And then social emotional learning. And I was real pleased because we've done a lot of things. Uh, our staff has presented. Uh, at UVA and some other places on social emotional learning and then student absenteeism, which the middle school is presented on. So a lot of those things I saw, we're already doing it. And it's always good when you go to a national conference and you're doing the things. You know, you don't have to implement because your people are doing it. And again, kudos to our, to our staff. Just very proud of them. Um, also met with our city manager and his staff. Uh, Travis and I meet once a month. Uh, the tentative date is April 26th for our joint city council uh, school board meeting uh, at six o'clock. And uh, we've already shared necessary paperwork and we'll be sending some other things this week uh, in preparation for that meeting next month uh, after spring break. Well, I met with the SAC team, uh, superintendent's advisory committee, a group of teachers, and, and uh, I was so pleased that, that most people have signed that intent forms and want to come back and the teachers were very happy. And I think that's important. Uh, I think when you have staff who are happy with what they do, and I don't know a perfect job, but they, they're somewhat happy about um, the family type atmosphere we have, they want to stay. And uh, I've been very impressed with that. Uh, we had PBIS meeting, we talked about our attendance and discipline. Uh, they go hand in hand. Uh, along with test scores. We want to make sure our young people are attending school. Uh, we want to make sure if we're having problems, and I don't know again if high school it doesn't, but we want to make sure we have an outlet for kids and that we're talking to them, that we have counseling. And we made a lot of references this past month for, for counseling for students as well as adults. And uh, we should not be ashamed of that, getting people help. Uh, regardless, it's, it's time out for um, making people feel bad because they need help. Be it students or grown-ups, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're here to help uh, make our staff and our students better. So um, I really appreciate, thanks to the board for allowing us to keep the, the self-help program that we have here that we can recommend, uh, not only for our students, our adults also. Um, did a class for Tech Go Hokies, um, uh, school administration, and budgeting because most of those people who work in a doctorate need to understand the budget process and as well as tenure and some other things and I, I enjoy it. Uh, we'll do another one of those in two weeks uh, for uh, tech. Uh, enjoy Read Across America. Did not have to put up with some things that I've usually had to deal with. In the past I went to three schools and I had an absolute ball. Uh, particularly one book at um, just talking at Patrick Henry talking about um, skin color. Uh, it was just a powerful lesson on just being accepting of people, uh, regardless of the nationality. It was just, it's just a powerful book, and I want to. I really want to buy it and give it to every person in the whole division. I'm serious. It was a great uh, book, and uh, Cameron and them recommended that, and it was just great. Um, I did have Emmett teach me math this week. It would not let me leave the building until <laughs> until I did that. I could not leave. So I spent time with him drilling me on my math skills. And so now I can add and subtract. I'm telling you. I promise <laughs> you. 
uh, but he drilled me real good. Uh, Albert Harris had a wonderful paint night. Uh, it was one of the biggest turnouts I've ever seen. And, and the other thing is, the parents were on point. They were actually painting and working with their students. You don't see that every time that you have parents come in. Sometimes they get you know distracted and the kids, that, that whole place, they had the book uh, night and then they had parents who were actually painting. Some of them were Picassos, they were masterpieces, uh, but painting with the kids. And uh, it was just a great turnout. Uh, one of the biggest I've seen us have in years. Um, we have had our thoughts with the middle school that have gone through the, the writing test this weekend. I uh, want to thank Ms. Wall and her staff and Mark uh, for creating a great testing environment uh, where the young people could focus. It's hound very well and very organized, and we appreciate that. He had the tornado drill, uh, which was always one of my favorites uh, <laughs> every year. Uh, but uh, that's a state drill that, that every, all the schools across America has had. Then Fast Track, I can't thank our staff <clears throat> that put together <clears throat> Fast Track. It was just outstanding. I think they had four booths, and it was just uh, mind-boggling. I want to thank you guys. Many of you came over, and you walked through, too. And uh, I, they played a little game with me, and I don't want to – how sour grace is not funny, Jim. Uh, we had a little technology game, and and they made sure that my phone was not working properly. And Jill, Jill, Jill can testify. She was a witness. That did, Travis, did you hear that? I know. Thank you, Travis. That's what I told Jill. I was like, "This is my new phone." But Jill will attest I was hitting the correct answers. And it was not going through. Okay, I'm just saying. Well, I must have been doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do it too? Well, Miss Brown, I had to help her. Hers was not working either. I was, okay. I was so, she was, uh, we're she gonna, was we're trying. Gonna, we need Nobody's to fix that. Okay. okay. Yeah, I Especially, I had like three people in competition with me, and they were fierce. And they, we need we need to fix that. Maybe look like I couldn't deal with technology. And who would who would think that? Oh, we know. <laughs> uh, we also met with the NCI staff, uh, <laughs> Angela and I, and and met that new director and just talked about some of the things they would be doing. Our Region 6 superintendents, we're getting ready for our final conference in Roanoke next month and uh, waiting on the, the Department of Education to get the, the formal right, the funding formula. That's, that's critical for us. Uh, it's good that they admitted that they've made a mistake and now we want to make sure that we're all kind of held harmless and does, won't lose any money from it. And uh, of course, you do know that the state superintendent also resigned. So there's a lot of going on down there, but I can honestly say, and I told the cabinet today as we met, our main focus is going to be keeping the main thing the main thing and making sure the Marshall City Public Schools that we're moving ahead. I, we really don't have time to wait, hesitate, or be confused. Uh, we've got to educate our young people. And so we're going to keep the main thing, the main thing, which is educating our kids. Uh, then finally, I just want to say this is the largest group I did a ride through um, of spring sports young people. I can't wait to get the count from us, uh, Dr. Dixon. But this is the largest group of spring participants I've seen. Track from the baseball to soccer, softball, track, tennis. I mean, I went through the whole gamut, and we have a ton of young people participating. And I'm excited about that uh, because all the young people need to be involved in something. So if you get a chance, do not feel bad to the board. If you can't stay, it's, there are too many events. There's no way you can stay at one event all day. Uh, but if you get a chance, please ride through and, and just spend a little time watching the young people. Um, um, they're, they're doing a tremendous job, and we have a lot of events. And I'm hoping our bus routes will allow us to get to every place on time. That's my next worry. Uh, but it's going to be a great year with a lot of student participation. So I'm real happy with that. The more the merit. Maybe and next month Mr. Um, Coach Golden can come and report on that. That would be nice because it's great. huge. It's a huge yeah. It's a huge group. I hope we have enough uniforms on word. Uh, it's a huge group though. And, uh, and so I'm really excited though. I want young people to participate. Okay. Okay. I thank That's you. That's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. Any matters from the board? Mr. Woods? No, ma'am. Mr. Yeah. Williams. Excuse me, Ms. Gibbons. <laughs> There's just a couple of things. Um, I wanted to let you all know that we do have a governor's school, uh, school board meeting on March the 21st. Damn. It's in Danville at the Institute for Advanced Learning Research. And I'll report back to about that next month. Okay. Also, I did have an opportunity to read, uh, and I really appreciate how welcomed you felt at Albert Harris and Patrick Henry, and the kids were so excited, and it was, it, I really enjoyed it, so thank you. And uh, there are a lot of good things going on everywhere. I wanted to give a shout out, promote for the high school. There is an after prom fundraiser, if this is right, Dr. Dixon, of the faculty playing basketball against the students which should be great entertainment, and I know how competitive Dr. Dixon is, that that alone should be quite a show to see. They're trying to, <laughs> Ms. Gibbons, they're trying to recruit me. They're trying to but, recruit but me. At any rate, Dr. Dixon. I had called this week. It's March 25th, right? <clears throat> March 25th at yes, 4 o'clock? That's correct. So please come out. We need to support after prom and all that our parents are trying to do to, to promote a safe evening for prom, and we would really appreciate it. And first, I think the juniors and seniors are going to play each other, and then it's going to go to the faculty versus the students. And so it should be entaintaining. Well, the Are we having dodgeball this year? <laughs> I, I don't think there's any dodgeball this year. This is their activity. Okay. I also understand Good that idea. there is an enormous amount of talent, which we always knew this, that there was at the middle school. The middle school is having a talent show tomorrow. And I heard some of the administrators are going to be performing, and they're quite talented. And I'm just, I just think it'll be quite, quite, quite the same. Miss <laughs> Waller's going to be back. She's getting her instrument back out. She'll be playing her instrument tomorrow. I think Mr. Tool's going to play his. I, actually, it's like 14 or 16 members are wow. playing, and I think that'll be quite the entertainment. <laughs> Looking forward to that. So, good job. <laughs> and that's at 8:35, right? Tomorrow. Yeah, 8:45. Oh, so early. 8:45. <laughs> oh, wow. And what Mr. Tool's playing something? He's playing a tuba. Tuba. All oh, right. Oh, baritone. That's all right. Same thing. <laughs> yes. And um, some of the Central Office staff is joining us. Ms. Hines will be playing with us. Mr. Wright. Shauna Hines? Yes, Shauna Hines is playing. She'll do something creative. Mr. Wright. I think she's going to get Oh, okay. But Mr. Wright is um, Dr. Warhill's I think well, they've, they've been, been at least to probably the practice. Good and, yeah. Anyway, like I'm fun. grateful for all that you're doing in all the schools, and thank you for a great job. So I think we may have missed this last month that it was um, Bus Driver Appreciation Day, February 22nd. So I'm sorry that we missed that. Yeah. So can we get something out soon? donuts or breakfast or something out to the bus drivers Absolutely. yeah because they work so hard they always do they work during the summer they work during COVID never stopped um, so yeah we really appreciate um, our bus drivers yes, we and did. then also this is women's history month and I want to take the opportunity to say to our administrators all of our teachers all of our women um, thank you for what you do um, appreciate you and I appreciate you Cameron for kind of emailing me back to make sure I was feeling better um, and, 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 and Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. 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 Brown called me to check on me. And, oh, and, and Mrs. Smith did too. So thank you. Just Dr. Taylor needs to understand why I missed reading day. So he needed to understand that. So we want. It was a lot quieter. Him. Let me put it this way. I even brought a prop this year because I've been so it's right. Because you know what happens. Yeah. You don't bring a prop. I, I, a I prop. really. I really wanted to um, get out to paint night, Mrs. Brown, so hopefully if you don't do it again this year, maybe you do it next year, I can come out. And Fast Track was amazing. I just wanted whoever set up those booths, whoever did that, it was amazing. Really nice. It was very, very nice. Um, a little warm, a little warm, but it was very, very nice. Um, Mr. Woods, did you have an opportunity to go by? It was very nice, Mr. Woods. They have some goodies for you, too, probably. And I wanted to um, to ask the board if we could, we didn't get to finish our walkthrough at the high school. 
Um, we, Mr. Dixon, if we can set up a day to do that, I walk through. Um, I know you have a lot of things going on, but we went over to the shop building and we didn't get have an opportunity to come inside the school. So if we can set up a day to do that, and I'll give you a call, we can set that up. Um, other than that, um, next on to the a reminder of dates. End of the third nine weeks is March 14th, two hour early dismissal. May the, um, excuse me, April 3rd through April 10th is spring break. Um, classes res resume April 11th. I had April 11th as preschool registration, but based on what Sheila, Mrs. Williams said, that starts March 27th. Um, start taking applications for that. April 13th is our next regular board meeting, and that's on a Thursday. And uh, April 17th through 18th is kindergarten registration. Do we have any unregistered citizen comments? None? In communication? We had an exceptional you, uh, number of, also of uh, being room staff that we had to send gift baskets or flowers to to our staff members. A lot of death. This I wanted to mention one time. more thing. Miss Mayana has went to a conference and um, and she'd like to report on it. We talked about that a little oh. bit. Sorry. Um, yeah. Come to the mic. My owner works very hard for us. She's been recruiting. She's out all the time recruiting. She takes very good care of this board, um, and we appreciate her. Um, I did go to um, a VASPA conference that was um, in Virginia Beach. Um, I left on Sunday, came back, and I drove straight into um, Fast Track. Um, but um, it's a lot of good stuff they gave out, um, and knowing that you know a lot of other divisions are seeing the same challenges that we're seeing. Um, I connect this with some other HR directors, um, they're local to our area, and we kind of shared some ideas about different things as far as you know recruiting and employee morale and an employee appreciation. So, some of this stuff I want to implement um, this year and going into the next school year, and just making some good um, connects and networking. So Mayan is never like in her office. She's always <laughs> doing, doing, doing. So thank you for looking out for us and thank you for all you do for our school division. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so thank you. much, Mayan. Thank you. thank you so much. And that's all. Then I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. I so Ms. Dillard? Yes. Ms. Gibbons? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Woods? Yes. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.